Welcome back to another sketch tutorial. This one is going to be a bit faster. We're just going to create some basic text inputs, one without the label and one with a label. Let's start by creating an artboard. And let's call this, uh, let's go with inputs. Okay, let's pull in a container. I'm going to pull in small radius again, same as our buttons. And I'm going to lump on top a regular size piece of text. And let's go with high regular left for now. Okay, I want the input to be the same height as our button. So let's go 48. Let's just double check that. Yep, yeah, 48. And I'm going to go with 16 by 12 at the edges. Uh, we're not going to do any horizontal auto layout like we did on the buttons on the text area. This is just going to be fixed, so we're going to define this ourselves, or it could take the size of the container it's in. Right, so I'm just going to get rid of the shadow. Let's put the fill to light. And the outline, I'm going to make one pixel dark and our lighter variant there. So this is the basics of our text field. Okay, so I'm going to create, I'm just going to group it and then create a symbol from this. I'm going to create a directory of inputs. Then I'm going to go with text field because we might add something else later on, like a text area, a switch, things like that. And then I'm going to call this standard for now. And that'll do. So let's click through to our symbols page and see it there. There we go. We're already on here. And I'm also just going to edit the name and give this an ending of resting. This is kind of the resting state of our text input. Now let's duplicate it. And I'm going to call this one placeholder. I actually want that one at the top. I actually want this one at the top, so let's just swap these for now. And I'm going to make this dark disabled, the text here. And oh, one thing I forgot to do, I want to make this, make sure it's 16 padding on both edges. Let's do the same for this one. Give it a plus three. And Make sure it pins to the left and the right, so that if we if we just jump back to our components and we decide to change the, the width of our text input for whatever reason, our text part actually continues to be 16 from the edge from each side in the horizontal area. So we've got placeholder, we've got resting. Now let's do. focused and I'm going to make this change the outline on fill outline I'm going to go for two pixel primary I'm going to do with our main stronger color let's create an error version so let's get error which I'm going to make the outline red and let's make another one Rename this to success, and we're going to change this to our success color for the outline. There we go. Okay, great. So right away we've got a placeholder version, resting, focused, error, and success versions of our text field. And I'm just going to create one more as well, and that is going to be disabled. And in this version, I'm going to have the fill. We're going to set this to probably 200, just so it's kind of obvious that this is not interactable. Oh, let's rename that as well. Okay, great. I'd also quite like to create a version with a label. So to do that, I'm going to insert just the standard one. 
going to go with the resting. So here we go. Okay, and I'm just going to insert a bit of text on top of that. I'm going to go with dark. Let's go with low emphasis and small and left align. Let's just call this label up here. Can give it four distance of that. Group that. And then I'm just going to create a symbol from this. Oh, let me make sure. Set that up to the width of that as well. And then create that symbol. So I'm going to go with inputs. This is again a text field, so text field is fine. And instead of standard, I'm going to go with, with label. And that will be fine. You see it's coming down here. So I'm just going to keep that there for reference. Okay, fantastic. So I'm not going to create all of the different variants with the with label one as well, but I'm going to show you how you could use those inside of here. So if I just have the with label version, I can actually go over here and override the input that's inside of the symbol from resting to any of the other ones I liked. So I could change it to disabled. There we go. We've got disabled with an with a, a label. And the same for any other of these. So that's pretty cool. Now let's bring these into components. So we've already got our standard one there. Let's just line them up. Okay, and now I'm just going to bring in the rest of them just so we have them as reference. I'm just going to line them up alongside each other so that we can compare the label version and the non-label version. Okay, now let's bring in the with label version. Okay, I'm just going to duplicate this a few times and then we can edit these using override so they match the ones above them. So this one here, I can go from resting straight to focused, and there we go. This one here, resting to error, resting to success, resting placeholder, and resting disabled. Just going to change the order of a few of these. All right, that's a bit better. And that is all we really need for now. So next time, we're going to bring all these components together. I'm going to create a little sign up form from all of these. And then we're going to have a look at how small changes to some of our basic elements, like the color variables, some of our layer styles, our textiles even, uh, we can see how those changes trickle down and can have a profound impact on our design later down the road, but we can do it with minimal effort instead of changing every little detail individually. So I'll see you next time.